This dual 1019 changer turntable was purchased in 1968 by my dad in Hong Kong during his four years of service in the U.S. Navy. Bypassing these head shell contacts, which have lost their spring tension, is the goal of this project. Lift the spindle to remove it. Lift and rotate the platter to remove it. Remove the head shell from the tone arm without damaging the stylus. Remove the white plastic base from the tone arm by sliding it down. Do this gently because the tone arm wires are attached to it. Use a screwdriver or similar tool to remove the tone arm wires from the slots. Use a Phillips screwdriver to remove the mounting screws at the front right and back left. Make sure the screws spin freely. Before separating the turntable from the base, lift and tilt the mounting screws so that the heads face away from the center. While holding both mounting screws, lift the turntable from the base. It is helpful to have someone else hold the base steady. Gently rest the turntable on its corner and hold it with one hand while removing the RCA cables from underneath the turntable. Pull the gray power cord upward and through the base. Place the turntable upside down on a soft surface to prevent it from being scratched. Use a thin tool to remove the clip which holds the tone arm wires. Remove the screw which holds the tone arm wire bracket. Note that each of the two tone arm wires has a pair of wires inside. Use a soldering iron and solder wick to remove the old solder and tone arm wires from where they are attached. Repeat this step for each of the four tone arm wires. Remove the old solder and tone arm wires from the white plastic base removed from the tone arm. Feed the new tone arm wires through a piece of heat shrink tubing that is about 4 inches long. Join the ends of the new and old tone arm wires by bending them around each other. Slide the heat shrink tubing over the junction, placing it roughly in the center. Heat the tubing to cause it to shrink around the junction of the wires. This is the heat shrink tubing after it was heated. Begin to feed the bundle of old and new tone arm wires through the tone arm. This is the tone arm wire bundle after it has been pulled through the tone arm. 
Note the old green wires to the right, the e-train tubing, and the colorful new wires at the top left and bottom. Here are the new tone arm wires as they exit the tone arm base and enter at the head shell mount point. Before identifying the problem with the head shell contacts, my dad and I believed the faulty connection was with the head shell wires. To eliminate that concern, he soldered the head shell wires to the cartridge and the head shell. When I later discovered that the problem still existed, I guessed that the head shell contacts must be faulty. I knew the ADC cartridge would need to be replaced, so I ordered a Shure M97XE from Amazon. Attach the tone arm wire connectors to the cartridge pins and attach the head shell to the tone arm. Cut the tone arm wires to the proper length and solder them where the old wires were attached, making certain to attach the left and right channels appropriately. Reassemble the turntable and set the stylus force with a gauge. Set the anti-skate according to the owner's manual. Yeah, the heavy blows, so it out. 